Hello, welcome back to my haunted library. It's Regina. I hope you're doing well. I cannot say quite the same for myself. I uh, just went through a hell of a week, I have to be honest, because I got COVID for the first time ever. I guess it was the first time for everything. I managed to avoid it for, what has it been? Two, two years, more, three years? It's hard, I don't know, time just kind of sweeps by. But I did have a, um, a pretty bad uh, case of COVID. It, it's been uh, over a week now, so I, I feel like, you know, I'm not in, not uh, contagious anymore. I'm still taking, I'm being cautious, but I'm, you know, able to get out. And this is the first day I really have kind of felt completely normal, uh, or normal for me anyway. Uh, but really, this came on so fast. I've gotten bad colds before. I've even gotten the flu a few times, but I've never had something come on within like minutes uh, Joe and I were just, we, we had a regular Sunday, went to sh church, we went to breakfast. I, I have to say, though, I did hear, I, you know, the, the nervous system, especially high-strung people like myself, very sensitive to environments and, and things. And what happened was, uh, it was kind of like at a Victorian novel. I was just walking the dogs. Joe and I were walking the dogs. Everything was fine. And then I got a, a very... Uh, upsetting phone call from a, one of my family members was seriously ill and in the hospital. I'm happy to report he's out and he seems to be doing okay. So I don't want to, you know, get into that private story too much, but just hearing that news kind of sent me into like a spinning, a sick spiral. It's the only way I can describe it. I mean, it was really like falling into like a Victorian fever, like immediately. Because by the time I got home from walking the dogs, I had to go right to bed. I'm like, I, I, I don't know what's wrong with me. I've got this pounding headache. My throat closed up immediately. And then I had a high fever. It was the, I think the highest it was like, it was, it was almost at 103. And I'm like, if this gets up even higher, I'm gonna go to the emergency room, but it didn't. Uh, but for like three days, I had a fever. I lay in bed, I couldn't eat, just, it was awful. It was absolutely awful. So if you have suffered from this horrible virus, you have my sympathies. I'm, I'm just happy that I was able to fight it off without medication. I took like, you know, Advil, that kind of stuff, but I, my body fought it off. So hopefully I've built up some immunity now. But anyway, I don't wish it on my worst enemy. It was awful, absolutely awful. So I'm, I'm very grateful today. It makes you really grateful for just being alive when you go through something like that. So yeah, I, I feel happy to be here. So uh, thanks for joining me. Uh, so what, what do I want to talk to uh, today? I really, you know, when you're sick like that and you have, especially when you have a bad headache and I get headaches anyway, I have, you know, I get migraines. So I, it was impossible to read. The only thing I could seem to do was watch uh, movies. So I, I did watch all the Indiana Jones movie, uh, movies up to the new one, which I want to see in the movie theater. So I'll report back and kind of maybe give my ranking of all of those. It was actually very fun to just watch something like that, like just a fun comic book adventure story. And some were better than others, but I thoroughly enjoyed them. And then I also watched, um, you know, nothing makes me feel better when, you know, I'm really in a bad place than watching uh, a V.C. Andrews. If you can't read it, then watch a V.C. Andrews. And luckily, the new Dawn series is out. So I thought I would have a little review today of the first of the um, TV movie of Dawn, the Cutler series. Here's the book. I've been dipping into the book a little bit to kind of reacquaint myself with the story. It's been a few years since I've read it. But I remember really liking the series a lot. And a lot of it came back to me as I'm watching and as I'm reading. So let's talk about it. Oh, before I forget, I wanted to mention Beth Hendy. You won my giveaway. Hopefully you got my message. I put it under your, the, um, your comment and I put it on my community page. But your StokerCon package is waiting for you. So just contact me at my email and I'll send it right off to you because I want to get that to you. And thanks for everybody who uh, entered my giveaway. I had a, a lot of uh, people entering that and it's a pleasure to give back. Dawn is about a young lady named Dong, Dawn Long Champ. 
She's in her early teens, struggling to fit into a high-class society, along with a startling discovery, which returns her to the wealthy Cutler family, full of deception, dark secrets, and lies. So uh, this is just for the first episode, which pretty much covers the first book. I didn't notice anything that really stood out as to not kind of being like the book, and I really enjoyed it a lot. The young actress playing Dawn, I thought, was a perfect choice for the character. I just see her looking exactly like that. She was very cute and very good. Her acting was really good. So the the young actress playing Dawn is Brett Basinger. I wonder if she's related to Kim Basinger. Is it Basinger or Basinger? Anyway, she was really good. And Fran Drescher is also in it, but she hasn't shown up yet. I know the character she's going to play, Agnes, uh, the, when she gets when Dawn gets to New York. So that makes sense that Fran would play a uh, a New Yorker, and it's it's going to be great to see her again. I haven't seen her in anything for a while. And wow, Donna Mills plays Lillian Cutler, the matriarch. She looks gorgeous gorgeous and I had to look up how old she she is she's 82 I think it said wow you know that's a testament to not getting like a heap of plastic surgery now she may have had a little nip or tuck I don't know but she looks amazing not just for her age she just looks amazing amazing in general those beautiful blue eyes I remember her she always had great eye makeup and uh back in the day and yeah, she's playing like a really good, nasty character. Silver hair, beautiful, and she really kept her figure. So God bless her. It's very inspiring to see, uh, you know, especially for, not that I'm in my 80s, so I've got a ways to go. Uh, but she, uh, you know, to see an older woman hold on to her glamour and not look like she's all done under the surgeon's knife like poor Madonna. I do feel bad for Madonna. We'll have a little little gossip today because Madonna, of course, was in the news. She had a a collapse. Um, It wasn't COVID. Apparently, she had some... I mean, it's a little shady. You wonder... They said she was revived by Narcan, which is used for drug overdoses, but God knows what's going on with her, but it's obvious that something isn't quite right, and I do feel for her. I'm I'm not a Madonna fan, as anyone who knows this channel knows, uh, but I, I, I don't wish poorly on poor Madonna. I feel like she is uh, probably very lonely. It's very lonely at the top, so uh, hopefully she'll recover and get her tour back. I have friends who go to every one of her tours. I've never been. I never would, but, you know, I know they're looking forward to it. In the first episode, it uh, pretty much covers the Longchamp family, her uh, parents, Dawn's parents, Orman and Sally Jean, and her brother, Jimmy. It takes place during the 70s, and they pretty much got the clothes. They always kind of get it a little bit wrong, but it's pretty good. I mean, there's this, uh, there are a few really ridiculous outfits, but I thought Dawn's uh, high-waisted jeans and a little peasant blouse, I mean, I had that exact outfit. In fact, I was trying to find a picture. There's a picture of me when I was, I think it was my 16th birthday party, wearing that outfit. So I've got to find that. It's really funny. So they got that right. And uh, Jimmy, the brother, the first scene shows the two of them as teenagers sleeping in the same fold-out bed and Joe is like what is what are you watching I'm like oh it's a long story it's V.C. Andrews and I explained to him that was kind of part of the thing and he was a little bit like okay it's a little ridiculous that they're sleeping in the same bed and Jimmy the brother is like giving he's not a real brother but he's giving her like the eye when she's dressing like it shows her silhouette through her nightgown and he's like you know And of course they get into that in the book. Once she gets to school, I thought that whole part was done. The the mean Cutler, what's her name? I think it's Clara Jean Cutler. And then the the boyfriend slash brother, I think his name's Philip. There's a lot of weird stuff going on. Once she finds out her real origin story, she goes 
to live at the hotel. Lillian Cutler, another Lillian. I've seen that name before in D.C. Andrews. Uh, Lillian uh, is the uh, grandmother from hell, basically making her work as a maid. And she's avoiding her sleazy brother, who even after he finds out he's her real brother, is not uh, deterred from pursuing her and nearly raping her. And he has a ridiculous outfit on in one scene. I died laughing. He's a cute guy, but he's wearing like the the red uh, polyester with a huge collar, the, the ring zipper with these ridiculous uh, checked, red checked pants. I mean, I don't even know if that was, be, that was something like uh, dads might have worn on the golf course, but I don't know if teenage boys wore that, at least not any that I liked. So I'll report back on the next episode or the next couple episodes, but it's definitely worth watching for VC Andrews fans. Highly recommend it. Lifetime always does a great job. I mean, not across the board. The last one, the last Flowers in the Attic series was amazing and uh, like the prequel. This one is pretty good and I can't wait to see Fran Drescher. Okay, so what else? Um, I'm going to start reading this today. This is the new Darcy Coates. I sent a message to Lydia. Maybe I'll do a buddy read with her. But anyway, I'm going to start, at least start um, reading this. And I'm going to do a reading vlog, which I haven't done for a while, and post that on my Patreon page. If you would like to uh, support the library, become a patron, I really appreciate it. I had mentioned a couple videos ago about starting a second channel devoted to writing. I think, uh, I'm still thinking about how I'm going to shape that up, but I, I think I'll probably start that in September. So it'll be like, go back to school and uh, get busy with writing. I want to wait till I feel a little better, have a little more energy before I attempt that, but I'm still planning that. But I also want to add some stuff to my Patreon. So check out my uh, reading vlog. I'll, I'll post it soon. I'm going to start this today and start my vlog today. So I'm looking forward to this a lot. So uh, what else? Uh, well, I did notice that it's getting time, that time of year for Garb August. I watched uh, Alex, the Bookubus's uh, video, and I'm sure there'll be more coming up. And I'm not even sure... I watched Alex's video, but I don't recall if there were like certain criteria because honestly, COVID brain is real. Let me tell you, it is absolutely real. I'm just, it's all I can do today to just kind of do this video and some errands I have to run because it's just, I can barely think. So I'm just going to wing my Garb August TBR. I want to read the Darcy Coates book before then and also one of my StokerCon books. But I can't wait to read some uh, trashy books for August. Now, I'm, trashy books, I didn't have to go far to find any because my that's pretty much what my library is. But I tried to choose some books. Now, I, I'm not going to read all these, but I grabbed a, a few that I thought looked particularly trashy. So let's see what I've come up with. These are all from my own library. I didn't buy anything. So this is the next uh, V.C. Andrews series, the Wildflowers series. So I thought, now this is the whole series, but I thought I would at least dig into it because it's been a while since I read any V.C. Andrews and watching Dawn put me in the mood. So I think I'm going to start at the beginning. This one is Misty, and these are the short books. These are very feel have a very like middle grade feel to it at least the last one did so I'm gonna start with those and then I just grabbed some paperbacks from hell that looked particularly salacious and ones that I haven't read before okay so first up we have Billy by Whitley Stryber it's a nice paperback from hell step back cover of this I have a feeling I have not read this one, but I've heard of it. I have a feeling it's pretty, like, like disturbing. But I don't know. It looks good. It looks like a good summer read. I remember when I was a kid, my cousins... Well, you know, I grew up in the country. I told you that before. 
and there weren't a lot of kids to play with because it was very spread out. So it was just a lot of farmland. And my cousins lived on one of the main farms in that area. And it was a beautiful, wealthy estate. And my cousin's husband was like the, uh, he was the farmer who lived on the estate and like cared for all the, the farm aspects of that estate. And uh, I guess he was the farmer in residence. This farm just was amazing because it had this enormous barn with uh, all kinds of like trap doors leading into cow cages and uh, secret passageways and basements and haylofts. And we used to play extensive games in that barn and in the surrounding cornfield, uh, like manhunt games at, during summer nights like you would not believe. <laughs> like just armed with a flashlight and when you get caught, you get locked in the cow cage. But there was one cage where if you climbed up and like shimmied up this uh, rope, you could go through the trap door and escape. I mean, it was crazy and it was great. And there's something about uh, summer reading which reminds me of spending a lot of time on the farm. And my, my cousin Stacy, my second cousin, she used to just have stacks and stacks of really sleazy romance books and uh, the sleazier the better. And we would just, I mean, literally lay in the fields and read books and just remember the smell of the honeysuckle and the straw, wild strawberries and just the smell of a farm. So I really want to kind of tap into that feeling for the month of August and just in getting my health back. There's nothing that seems to appeal to me more than laying in a field providing I have some bug spray and, uh, and reading. So anyway, I went off on a little bit of a tangent, but I try to find good sleazy books that will really inspire my summer reading. All right, this is another one that I have pulled off my shelf before when I was doing like vampire TBRs, and I still haven't read it yet, but it's so, the cover just kills me. This is Night Thirst by Patrick Whalen. It's that vampire wearing his sunglasses at night, backlit, just love it. So I'm definitely going to be looking at that one. And then also, this was one of my favorite teenage reads. So I, and I have, I've had this for a while that I've been wanting to read, reread it. And that's Suffer the Children by John Saul. Definitely going to try to get to that one. And then some other ones I just pulled off because they look like fun. This is The Manipulator by Dana Brookins. I've read a couple books by her. Cool cover. Looks like some kind of sea monster. Here's another one, uh, Child of Demons by Mason Burgess. It's another paperbacks from hell with a creepy doll on the cover. Oh, and then I saw these two, uh, The Swarm by Arthur Herzog. And while we're having the swarm, we might as well have Spawn. So I have Spawn and Swarm. Uh, swarm. I sounded very like Swarm, very Philly. Sometimes that accent comes out. Rob McGregor. This is a movie. And what else did I get? Oh, Last Come the Children by David Hagsburg, author of The Horror Men. I have no idea what that is, but that's a fun cover. It looks very salacious. And then, uh, I think that's it. Then I also wanted to grab a couple of romances because I do enjoy reading those in the summer. So this one is A Black Orchid by Nicholas Meyer. Nice cover. Oh, it has two authors. Nicholas Meyer and Barry J. Kaplan. So we have Black Orchid and White Orchids. We have different types of orchids. I actually, not orchids, but I was, I grew some beautiful lilies in my garden this summer. I tried something different. I planted a bunch of bulbs and they came up beautifully. So I'm happy about that. And this was Grace Livingston Hill, white orchids. Nice, I don't know, just like a romance. Anyway, just looking at these books, thinking about reading on the farm just makes me feel a lot better. So I'm hoping that uh, I'll get a chance to read more this week. 
and uh, I'll, I'll keep you posted about my uh, reading vlog. And uh, let me know in the comments below if you are reading anything for Garb August or for any other kind of summer reading. I would love to hear your thoughts. Also wanted to remind you that the latest Bookworms is out. I will link it below for some fun summer reading. You don't want to miss that. So that's all I have for today. Thanks for stopping by my haunted library, and I'll see you soon. Bye. <laughs>